Hello mate and welcome back to Let's Code 4, this time it's personal. In this video we're going to add some more functionality to our game. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everybody for subscribing and hitting the notification icon, that really helps me out. And an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. So let's jump into this then. So currently we have a game which the interaction buttons now function, after a certain fashion anyway. But what I want to do now is I need to be able to add in some additional things which we're going to talk about as we go through. The first thing we have to do is actually make our actions use up time, energy, and that's going to be a nice and easy job to do. So what we have to do is in our defaults and defines folder, what we're going to do, we're going to create a new list and it's going to be a list of lists. It's going to be nested lists. So I'm going to call this one effects and then I'm just going to say is, and then it's going to be a list. Next thing we want to do is actually append some things into it, and we can either do it in tandem with the interact buttons or at the bottom. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to put hash zero, and I'm going to do that the same thing for all of these action buttons so that we don't lose track of which one is which, and that's going to become very important once we create this list. In order to repurpose our buttons, or rather add functionality to our buttons without affecting the rest of the buttons that we have, for example, we don't need these effects to take any changes with respect to our main UI buttons, we just want them to affect interact buttons. So rather than adding more properties to these, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a list that works in parallel to our inter interact buttons. So what I'm gonna do here, is I'm going to come back and go and going to get my effects. Just copy that variable name there. I'm going to add my there like that, and then we're going to say dot append. Now then, we need to decide what effects we need to consider. First one is going to have to be time. So what I want to do, I'm going to put in a comment here, and I'm going to list the things. So the first thing we want is it's going to have to move time forward. Now we're going to have to say an energy cost because everything we do is going to cost a certain amount of energy. We also need to put in there a time of day lock. So we need to put in a start. We also need to put in a finish. And we also need to put in a location because there's going to be certain activities that we can't do in certain locations. And there are going to be need to be times of day where we can actually do things. Now, many of these things are going to be lists in themselves. For example, time isn't going to be a list. That's going to be an integer value. Energy is also going to be an integer value. Start and finish times, we could actually incorporate just that into a list. So we could just say uh, time list. And then locations, we could also just have that as a list, which is going to be the most simple thing we can do. So the first thing is talk. Now, as far as time is concerned, we want it to just be one. And we're going to append our time of day by one. So what's going to happen is it's going to, if we're doing it in dawn, it's going to go to morning. If we're doing it in morning, it's going to go to lunch, etc. What also need now to do is have an energy cost. Talking for a forenoon is probably going to use up about, let's say, 30 energy out of 100, 30%. Now, the reason that it's so steep is that we don't want the player to just be able to keep doing these things over and over and over again. We need them, they need there to be some kind of consequence for carrying out these actions. This is, after all, a stat management dating sim, so we need the player to think about their energy consumption. Now, the time list. Talking is going to be something that you want to do morning, lunch, afternoon, and evening, but obviously not necessarily dusk and night. So we can say with... Uh, we can actually put these as integer values again, so we want it to be 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we can just create a list, and we'll say 1, 2, three and four like so and then location we can have a list of locations we currently only have one two three four five locations so we could put this as a list of integers as well um, or we could just put this as a list of uh, code friendly names it really doesn't matter the way that we're going to check them is going to be really indifferent but i think for ease of use what we should probably do is just use a list of integers as well now talking to someone is something that you're probably going to be able to do in your house your kitchen 
your bedroom and your living room. Probably not so much the bathroom though, because you know, no one wants to have a conversation in the bathroom, let's be honest. So what we do is we'll create a list again. And in fact, we can do it with curly brackets like that. And we're gonna say uh, one or zero, one, two, zero, one and two, and then four, like so. Now let's just double check. Yes, we've got that all set up correctly. And let's just change this to curly braces again like that that's fine so now we are set up to go on that one and what we have to do is do the same thing for all of the actions that we have here so we'll just copy that Control c and then we'll just paste one two three four five for our five for our six buttons now we've got covered so now we just need to decide are they all going to take the same time for the ease of simplicity at the moment we're going to say yes um, I'm going to increase the energy use for fighting and working out and playing. So play is going to be, I'm going to say 32. Uh, fighting is going to be 40. And working out is also going to be 40. Nice and simple. Now then, time lists. We should be able to pretty much do all of those things at the same times. What I want to do is that at dawn, the only actions that you can really take is having your breakfast and getting showered, for example. At dusk, you might be able to watch a movie or something like that. And then at nighttime, you can sleep, you know. But the major interactions that you're going to be able to do with the different characters are pretty much mostly going to be locked into one, two, three, and four. However, there may be exceptions to that. That's why we're going to keep this list as it is and not have just that being the bog standard defaults. Now, locations. Again, my house. Probably not going to do a lot of these actions in, in many of these places, but for now, We'll leave them as they are simply because we just want to get this functionality working before anything else. So we've now got our effects list, which contains all of the information that we need for each one of our action buttons. And one last thing that we have to do before I forget is that we actually need to add an extra bracket at the beginning and end oops, of all of these because otherwise it's going to throw an error because it's looking for one property because we're not pending uh, a class like we are in the other lists so now we have to save that that should be good to go so now we can start setting up our uh, default interaction function to take these things into account now if you recall in our contextual default screen which is our actions ui we actually set the variable action selected to the index of the button is pressed now this is the variable that we're going to need to access in our default interactions file. So I'm actually just going to quickly pop that there just so that I don't forget it. Okay. So what we have done here is we first thing need to do is we need to actually check whether or not this action can take place or if it's the wrong time of day or if we don't have enough energy. Otherwise, it's going to jump out because there's no point. So first thing we have to do is we have to say an if statement at the beginning here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say if energy now we just have to double check that we've got the right capitalization for energy which is capital e if energy is greater than or equal to now this is where we need to action our list so we're going to say effects and we're going to say action selected so paste our variable in there now we can get rid of that because i will now don't need to remember that action selected now we need to actually access the um, where are we? Defaults and defines. We need to access this list again and find out which property it is. So energy is property two or property one in the case of code. So it's zero and then one. So we're going to say one like so. Value one. So if the energy is greater than that property, then we are good to go. But we also need to say and time of day. Let's come back to our defaults and defines. Find out what the integer variable for the time of day is. There's, there's, there it is. Control C that and then we can paste that there in because we're checking if it's within a list and then we're going to copy this and we're going to paste that there but this time we're going to change this to two because if I remember correctly our times are in fact zero one two so that list there cool so then we can add our, our colon there and then the rest of this procedure can do that now, for now, this will do. Eventually, what we will want to do is separate these statements out and return some kind of message saying, can't do that in this time of day, or can't do that, not enough energy, 
or perhaps in fact we could actually do that now so rather than tabbing all of that stuff in like i just did what i'm going to do is i'm going to undo that and i'm going to make things a bit simpler so if energy is less than that then we're going to simply return a message and then we're going to say return that's going to end this procedure like so and we'll just say not enough energy and then we can maybe put that in a pop-up screen or something afterwards it's fine next thing i'm going to do is say if time of day not in there so if it's not within there then we can say um can't do that right now return again and then the last thing we can say is if um, now we need to know what our location is and that's where things are going to get a little bit more complicated probably dependent on how we've got our code set up and I think the easiest way to solve that is to come into our classes file like so and we're going to define a new a new in a uh, new function sorry getting my models worded up we're going to say def and we're going to say where or let's just say uh, location int with a capital I and then we're going to do that and now what we can do is pass a value in but I think it'd just be easier just to say global location and global locations let's just double check that we've got those two properties correct locations with a capital L location with a small L that's cool and now what we're going to do is say for Q in locations in fact we'll say for I comma Q in locations we need to enumerate that oh need to also add a colon to the end there we go there we go now we're going to say if location equals equals q dot and now we need to double check if we've got a so we're actually using the code name so we just need to say name there that's nice and simple so we come back we say q dot name then we're going to return. In fact, no, we won't do that. We'll just say uh, int to return equals i. Then we'll come out of that loop and we're just going to say return i. And that's all we have to do. We just have to make sure that that's actually tabbed in correctly. Perfect save our file now we can reference our location the integer value of our location without having to do this over and over again because we've already done it so now when we come back to our default interactions we can actually reference this property so we'll say control c if control v add we need to put the curly braces or the sorry the brackets at the end of it every time we reference that because it's a function not just a property and then we can say if it's within and then we can copy all of this. If we can select it, control C, and then we're going to say control V. And this time we need to check what property value we're talking about. So it is number four, zero, one, two, three. So it's yeah, zero, one, two, three. So we're going to reference three. And then we're just going to return. We also need to change that to not in. And we're going to say can't do that here return cool so what we're doing is we're checking we've got enough energy if we haven't then we're going to return we're just going to cancel out of whatever we've clicked on if we say if we, it's not the correct time of day it'll do the same thing and if we're not in the uh, right location it will also not do that cool and obviously it'll only do the rest of this code if it manages to get past all of those checks so that's the initial checks done but we aren't finished yet because now we need to actually append or rather change our time and energy values to actually compensate so what we need to do at the very end of all of this stuff is we actually need to subtract them so we need to come here and say energy minus equals and then we can simply come up the top here copy that property paste that in there and then we can add time of day. That's going to be plus equals. And then we're going to copy that value. Paste that there. 
like so. Now we just need to double check that we've actually used the correct values. So our time is actually one and our energy is two. So we've got those back to front. So we'll just quickly swap those around so that we have the correct properties. So time is zero, energy is one. Come back into here. So energy is one, but time is zero. Yeah, because we're actually we're actually using the first property now, whereas we hadn't done previously. So now it will actually add, um, add to our time of day and it will subtract however much energy is useful. So when we run our code, what we need to do is just click on our character, same as before, and then we've got our actions available. As you can see, energy is currently at 100%, and we don't know what our time of day is, but we can just print that out once we've clicked on it. In fact, if we go Shift, we can go Print Time of Day, and it says one, so now we come out of this, let's click on our talk action, blah, 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 it does all the things that we previously had it do. And now as you can see, energy is reduced by 30. If I press shift O again and get that to do, now you can see time of day has indeed incremented fine. Now let's come back, click on that button again, and you can see our energy has dropped down to 40. We click on it again, we can see our energy has dropped down at to 10%. And then if I click on it again, you can see not enough energy, fine. But what we also need to double check, so if I now shift O and I say energy plus equals uh, 90 again, so it's back up to 100%. If I click on it now, it's going to do it one more time. Our energy is going to be subtracted again. If I do it again, now it's saying can't do that right now because we are now at the point time of day where we can no longer carry out that action. So that's that sorted. Now what I'll probably do in the next video is change it so that those texts that appear come as pop-ups so that the window doesn't keep coming up like it currently is the dialogue window because that's going to become really annoying if that keeps coming up. So we'll change that to a pop-up probably in the next video or the video after that. It's fine. In fact, what I will do is I'll actually add that to our planning. So I will put um, error appear in pop-up not in dialog screen in fact i'll change that bit to error to i'll say not enough energy or time etc appear in the pop-up not in the dialog screen and that's just that's just again my aid memoir to make sure that we've done it so that uh, it comes in uh, it doesn't doesn't slip through my memory basically but thanks very much for watching that guys i hope you found it useful let me know what you think in the comments below and i will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right bye bye